here it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today today I'm going to be trying out the half and half technique and you can do this in lots of different ways so I'm going to show you a few that you can do today you can also use any colors that you want to use I'm going to keep it really simple today but you could use any colors of cardstock yellows or oranges blues greens gold silvers anything is going to work here and I'm also going to show you some tips and tricks along the way to make this process easier that I have found work for me now I was actually going through some of my old cards and found a card that inspired me to try this technique today or it kind of reminded me this is a card that I made a little bit ago on this channel there is a video that goes with this one so if I remember I will try and link it down below in case you want to check out how I did that one it's really really simple to create and so I thought this reminded me of the half and half technique so I have got some craft colored cardstock and some white colored cardstock here and this is what I'm going to start off first with this woodlands die set there are two trees in this set and I like the slightly wider one I feel like it fills my card a little bit more to start off with I need this to be exactly the same die cut in exactly the same place on both pieces of cardstock so I'm going to have one piece of white cardstock and one piece of craft cardstock and this is just the way that I do it there are lots of other ways to do this but this is what I find easiest so I have used some mint tape which is just low tech adhesive tape and then I am going to cut off all those four pieces so that when I put it onto my white piece I know that if those four pieces are all lined up that I have it in exactly the same spot so I have run this through my die cutting machine you can see I got a really nice clean cut there but I want everything to stay in place because this has little bits in the middle that is going to be able to fall out now you can kind of do this at two different stages you can either um, take the die off first and hope that all the die cuts kind of stay in the die and then put the mint tape on the back I just find it easiest to do it this way although it does mean that you kind of um, have to kind of come back later on and take it out but you'll see what I mean in just a minute so I have peeled this off carefully and everything because we have that mint tape on the back is stuck nicely where it was die cut and here you can see I just line up all four of those pieces exactly so that they are up against the edges I cut the edges so that they're nice and flush so I know that everything is lined up exactly the same on both cards without having to do any real measuring <laughs> if I can get away with not measuring things I will find a way usually and this is my way for this one now when it comes to taking this one out because I'm only making this card using uh, this die I don't really have to keep this uh, tape here I could have just peeled it right off but I'm trying to keep everything in as much as possible in its little places so that I am able to do my inlay in a minute now you can see a couple of little pieces there got stuck uh, inside the die I am taking off my mint tape really carefully because I'm just going to keep reusing that there is no reason why I can't reuse it over and over again so I just pop my extra little pieces in that didn't want to come out at the beginning and they have stuck nicely because of that mint tape on the back there and now I just have two cut in exactly the same place on each card these cards at the moment measure uh, three and three quarters by five inches but uh, that's neither here nor there they're going to work for any size that you do so now I'm going to pull these out of their background as I said you can kind of do this at the beginning when you freshly die cut it but I think I just find it <laughs> kind of like the process in my mind this is kind of the next step so this is just how I do it now we need to have some adhesive behind here so that I can inlay everything I've got a couple of pieces of double-sided adhesive here these are from scrapbook.com very very sticky and these are never going to let go once they are all glued down which is what I want I take off the release paper then I pop it on the other side of the tree because the tree has such a big gap that I would otherwise stick this down onto my table so I slip that little piece of release paper underneath and this one here I managed to get it on wonky and it's not going to come up once I start so all I do is run my blade of my scissors through there and kind of cut right through and then we are all good to go now once I turn this over and pull off the release paper that bit there is all completely sticky and we want to do kind of the opposite for each card so for the craft cardstock I'm going to take the white outline and you can see it just fits in like puzzle pieces really nice pops it in and I know that it is nice and stuck down when it is on that uh, scrapbook.com adhesive then I take all the little pieces of the tree and pop them in 
the only fiddly parts here there's like two little pieces apart from that I can pretty much do everything else with my fingers but the reverse tweezers do help out a lot uh, when it comes to those couple of little pieces when I'm choosing a design to do this technique with I do make sure that um, I can kind of inlay everything really nicely I don't want to make life hard for myself so I definitely do look at the design and make sure that I've chosen something that's very doable and isn't likely to fail for me so here I'm going to the opposite for the white so I've got the craft tree in place and then I'm popping the white pieces back into all of their little gaps I find this bit really therapeutic if it's not too fussy so I quite like the die cut inlay technique however you could also fill this in with like glitter or something like that I mean there are lots of different ways to do this technique which could be really really fun now here comes the fun part because I am going to slice these right in half for this first tree I am actually not going to measure I am making sure that my cutting blade is going directly down the center of the tree so I actually uh, it's not quite straight perfectly straight because I didn't measure anything when I put the tree on but it is directly down the center of the tree and that's all that really matters for this project now this one is uh, the tree isn't symmetrical but it you know kind of is um, I'm going to show you the next shape it doesn't have to be symmetrical at all it can be anything you want and you can also do this in like quarters I mean the opportunities are endless it is a really really fun technique so I'm just showing you the basics here and hopefully this inspires you to give this technique a try as well now just for me I like popping this down onto some copy paper just some really really thin paper I take off the release paper from the back from where we uh, had that double-sided tape and that means it's going to stick nicely onto our little piece of copy paper and this is going to keep it all together so clearly this te technique is going to make two of each card so I'm going to show you four cards today uh, just to give you a little bit of an idea of how you can create these and a couple of different looks and how you can turn them into finished cards more importantly so now you can see there's that little bit of copy paper on the back it doesn't have to be flash it's just enough no one's going to see it it just holds the cards together whilst we carry on with the next steps now I'm actually going to switch into doing the first few steps here again I am reusing that tape that I had before and I have the curvy leaves die the really big one from that and I'm going to put this uh, horizontally and go across my panel here my original piece of card is slightly smaller than my first one that I did for the tree so I will need to pop my tape across and then cut the sides again and that means that when I pop it onto my black piece of paper that it is going to be exactly in place again that is one thing I love about the mint tape it, it is very reusable I can use it time and time again um, even though it is nice low tech tape so I've popped the release paper under each one I put the double sided adhesive that's on the back remember I'm putting the adhesive then I take the opposite color in this case I did the black and the white in the previous one I did the craft and the white as I said at the beginning you could do any colors you could do yellows and all sorts of bright and beautiful colors I am actually creating these cards for somebody to give away and they asked for this color scheme and so I am more than happy to oblige so hence why I'm making them like this today um, because they are getting given away however as I said you could do this for any occasion make them bright and bubbly and they can be birthday cards they could be anniversary cards you could make them into baby cards I mean it all depends on which die cuts you're going to use and which colors you're going to use the opportunities are endless just as I'm finishing off the black one here so I have my white die cut in there and I'm putting in those black little pieces inside the leaves you don't have to have a die cut that has um, something in the middle you could have a solid die cut and that is going to work just fine as well so experiment with what you have on hand these are a couple that I chose and they just happen to have bits in the inside um, as well now for this one again I am going to cut right down the center this one is not symmetrical at all so I am going with the center of the uh, piece of cardstock that I had put it onto once we have both of those pieces of paper cut in half then we're just going to do the same process I kind of sped through this one a little bit because you've already seen it is exactly the same process as the first one that we created but I'm actually going to do a couple of little things before I pop these ones together now for this sentiment I have the made for you stamp set and I love that little thinking of you it's perfect it's kind of not dominant it's just a nice little kind of quiet sentiment 
but I knew that I wanted to have black on one side on the white side of the cardstock and I wanted to have white on the other side of the cardstock. So here's what I decided to do. I have carefully inked up the thinking in the VersaFine Onyx Black ink. Then I am inking up the of you very carefully in the Versamark ink. So Versamark is a sticky embossing ink, but because the um, Onyx Black ink is a pigment ink, it means that that is going to be able to be embossed as well because it's going to stay wet for a little bit. So you could definitely do this separately, but I was able to just carefully pop each word on each ink pad and it worked absolutely fine. So for the Versamark on the black, I'm adding some white embossing powder. And then to make sure that I'm consistent with the amount of shine and the kind of look, I'm adding some clear embossing powder to the black, the thinking word. And in that way, they are going to both look very similar. You absolutely don't have to do this. This was just fun and it was kind of um, just that little bit extra. If you didn't want to do this, then you could just add a little banner, a white banner down the bottom and have some black stamping over top of it or any color that you wanted to do. But I thought that this would be fun before I put this down together on the little piece of copy paper. So the pieces of double-sided tape that I used on the back of these didn't quite cover the whole panel. Uh, I was just using up scraps and bits and pieces. So I'm going to add a little bit of liquid glue there down the sides just so that I get it all nice and adhered evenly. Then when I put this against my card base, I felt like it was just, something was missing. It was a little too plain. So I found a piece of um, matte black cardstock and I'm going to add that. So it's just the same cardstock that I used uh, for the right hand side there. And I'm just going to give this a little matte. And I think that this really brings it together, especially when I put it down onto the white card base. So I think it's just that little extra touches sometimes can make a big difference. I add my liquid glue and then this card is very, very simple, but this one is all finished. I think this is very clean, but I love the look of it. Now for the second one, I am going to change it up just a little bit because this is going to be um, the same kind of sentiment, but slightly different. So I'm putting this one down on some copy paper, same as before. And this one for the sentiment, you can see that there is obviously the black and the white. I decided to cut this one down and create a little kind of feature at the top of my card. Um, and this way, this is one of the ways that you can kind of having to do that stamping in two different colors. So I'm just using my nice big paper trimmer here. I will have all of these uh, supplies that I'm using linked in the description box below this video and you'll be able to check out anything if you are interested. Now when I put this down on the cards, you can see here it just looks like it needs a little bit more. So this is why I have that little black mat here. I'm going to do the same thing as before and I just made sure that it was a fraction bigger than the piece I originally had. And then I just added that with some liquid glue then you see me have a quick check to make sure that I have the card the right way up because put your hand up if you have ever adhered a card front on and it was actually backwards or the wrong way around or upside down. That would be me. I've definitely done that. So these days I check quite a lot. This is the Curly Greeting stamp set and I'm going to take the Thinking of You stamp uh, just so it has the same sentiment as the last one, but it is just a little bit different. It takes up a little bit more of that empty space down the bottom and I'm stamping it in black because these cards are just going to stay black and white, clean and simple. So these are the two first cards that we've created. Now coming back to the trees, and I am going to finish these off very clean and simple, but I think once we add a couple of extra things, these are going to turn out gorgeous. So this one I'm actually adhering to the top, the very top, and I've got that little space going down each side. You can have fun with your how you adhere down your card fronts. There is no rules or no script that you must follow as to how they should look. It's fun to change it up every now and then. So instead of me just having my plain border like I usually do, I decided to do something just a little bit different. Now this is the Christmas Sparkle stamp set. This is my favorite. I think this was released last year. Um, so it is a little bit older, but definitely, I think this is maybe one of the only Christmas uh, word stamp sets that I have, and it does everything for me. So I have popped this down the very bottom again, stamping it in that nice black crisp pigment ink. And then just while I have the ink out and the stamps, I'm going to take a little piece of the Lawn Fawn Vellum here. That's important because you can do heat embossing on it. I added my anti-static powder bag on it. Then I'm going to stamp in the pigment ink. Now to set this in a much easier way I find is to add some clear embossing powder because it won't set very well on the vellum ink unless you use uh, something like stays on ink. But this way I can just use the regular inks that I have 
add some embossing powder and that way I know that they aren't going anywhere. Then I will cut this down so it's into a nice thin strip and this is going to go on my second cut. Now from here, you can pretty much uh, kind of go as heavy or as light on the embellishments as you would like to. If you want to leave them extra, extra plain, then having these cards just as is is going to work. But in a minute, I'll show you the very, very simple, but I think effective looking little details that we are going to add. I'm just adding a couple of pieces of um, double-sided tape here and that will keep down my little vellum uh, sentiment that's going to go across the middle. I like having this wrapped around just my card front, so I do this first before I adhere this down onto my card base. But if you forget, you can always do it after as well. Fold those pieces of vellum around and then it goes nicely through the uh, tree that we have created without kind of taking away from it, I think. I'm popping some liquid glue on the back, popping this down onto my four and a quarter by five and a half inch card bases. Now, as I said, you can definitely leave it here. I thought these needed just a little something extra. So you could either use some sequins, you could use some enamel dots, you could use um, any kind of glitter or little bits and beads that are going to go really well but I'm going extra simple with some Nuvo drops in the gold and I wasn't sure yet if I was brave enough to add the red. I thought that might have been a little too much for the card but you'll see in a minute how that looks. I'm just going to do some little gold drops here and there. You could also do all sorts of colors and these could look like Christmas lights. I was keeping these very plain and simple. So here's the gold one and I love the extra little touch. I feel like this really, really finishes off the card and yet it is so incredibly simple. Now I got brave and decided to do the red and I actually really like how it looks. It's a little bit more than the gold, but not too much in my opinion. So I do like it and I'm glad that I gave it a go. So I turned these two into the Christmas cards and the other two became thinking of you cards. But these are all four cards for today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed and learned some tips and tricks along the way of creating these half and half techniques. It creates really gorgeous cards and for any occasion using any colors that you have on hand of cardstock. Thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you in the next video. Thanks, bye.